Hello everyone, uh, I am Mahfuz Al Hassan, and today I am going to present the paper that is titled as Learning to Navigate in Cities Without a Map. This is a paper from the DeepMind group of Google and it has been published in NIPS in 2018. So, about navigation. So when you are going somewhere, you have actually two questions in mind. The first one is, where am I? And the second one is, where am I going? In the Middle East, there may be many questions like, what is the shortest distance between your start and final goal, and which route do you want to take? So Google basically is working on this project for like last five years. So this is a result of their five years work. So what they have used here is like is the basic, basically they have used reinforcement learning. So before diving into the too much details of this paper, I'm going to talk a little bit about reinforcement learning. So what is reinforcement learning or in other way, deep in this modern way, deep reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, there is an agent, it will take an action from an environment and it will act on that environment and from the environment it will get some rewards and also it will have some observations like uh, what its current state and what its next state and what's the rewards. So let me tell you with an example. We have everyone I think has here played the Mario game, the Super Mario. Uh, the, in Mario game, the environment is Super Mario Bros. So let's say now, this time just uh, visualize that Mario is playing by itself. So what will Mario do? Mario will take an action. Let's say it will go right. So it, this is its current state. It will go right. So what will be the next state? The next state will be the next frame. So this is the next frame. And from that, Mario will get some reward and it will have a, a visualization about its about its all of these states, like what was its previous state, what was its next state, and the reward. So, in deep reinforcement learning, how do you decide which state do you want to go, or how good a state is? This is actually decided by two things. The one is value function. So, what does a value function mean? It means that given in a state S, if you follow the policy pi, what expected reward you are going to get. And there is another thing that is called Q-value function. In Q-value function, it tells that in state S, if you take action A, in Mario case, if you go right, and then if you follow the policy pi, what kind of expected reward you are going to get. Let me tell you a little bit about policy. Policy is nothing, it's just like, what action you want to take in each state. That's it. So this is a 3D simulated environment from a paper, and this is also from DeepMind Reinforcement Learning with unsupervised auxiliary task. Here you can see that an agent is moving, oh, an agent is moving in a 3D simulated environment, and this is its goal. And here you can see the action. It can move forward, left, and right. And this is the value function graph. And whenever the agent is moving closer to the goal, the, you can see the curve, the curve peaks, uh, reaches to its peaks. And also, here you can see the reward. Whenever the agent is closed to the goal, the reward bar gets full, and the no reward bar works in opposite direction. Talk about those, those layers. Okay, oh, also, there, uh, you, you have seen something here, these are the output of the convolutional layer they have used. So, the question of the Google was, and the problem of their work was, the main problem was, it was in simulated environment. So their target was, can we solve this navigation task in real world? So they replaced this simulated environment with the street view of Google. And instead of maze, they actually create a graph by themselves using the Google map. So they, uh, now we need to go into the real world environment. And they have actually made, made an environment that is called street learn. 
in street learn uh, there are lots of images from uh, google street view but the problem is google street view most uh, all the images are in panorama so what they do they have cropped and rendered it each rendered each image at 84 by 84 scale so now what kind of actions uh, the uh, does the agent want to take they have set five actions for in any state for the agent the agent there are five different moves the agent can rotate left slow or rotate right right slow agent can rotate left or right fast and agent can move forward these are the five different actions they have uh, defined so what are the environments for environments they have selected new york london paris this is just an arbitrary uh, selection the main author according to main author peter mirowski he said that he knows this he knew this environment really well that's why he selected those so you, you can see the, this is the Times square central park of new york and the saint paul's cathedral in london so these are the graphs uh, this is the view of these places so in each city they have taken almost 7,000 to 65,000 panoramas. The distance between two consecutive panoramas is 10 meter, is 10 meter, and it covers almost 3.5 to 5 kilometer in each, each area. So the tasks the agent solve, it's called courier task. So what is the courier task? The agent will start at a random state, and it, it will go to, and a random goal will be given to it, it will navigate without a map and it will get a reward when it is close to the goal and in their case they have selected it as, as 200 meter. It will rotate left right or it will move forward and each, at each time step the agent, there will be two types of input to the agent. First one is an RGB image 84 by 84 and second one is the most important most highlighted matter of this paper is the landmark based goal, goal description. So what is the landmark based goal description? Uh, what they do, what they did, they have put arbitrary some pins on the map. And these, these pins they have called landmarks and they have selected these locations arbitrary. There is nothing, no, nothing, no theorem to it. So, they have uh, published a database which has the latitude and longitude of each landmark. So to represent a goal at latitude T and longitude T, they take the softmax over the distances to the K landmarks. So for a certain time, the distance vector if D, if D is the distance vector, then this will be the equation for the ith landmark to the goal. Let me uh, clear, clarify you in a simplest way. Let's say this is the agent, agent one to reach the goal. So let's say we have four landmarks, one, two, three, four. And we have the latitude and longitude for each landmark. And we know the distance from the goal to each landmark. So we'll take softmax over this, over these four distances and let's say we, we get these values. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. So the agent will have only this information. He has to go to a goal which is 0.3 from first landmark, 0.4 from second landmark, 0.2 from third landmark, and 0.1 from fourth landmark. Agent won't have any kind of information about its present position or won't have any kind of information about the goal position. And that's the most significant thing about this paper. Agent doesn't know where it is. Agent doesn't know what the goal is but it has the goal description based on some landmarks. And it will risk, believe me. So the architecture. They have actually described three sets of architecture. Uh, first one is the basic one that is called goal navigation agent. In goal navigation agent, they have described it in this way. It has two convolutional layers, I will show you in details, and an, and an LSTM. The convolutional layers got a input 84 by 84 RGB image, and the LSTM got the landmark-based goal description, also the previous action and previous reward. So let's see the archi uh, architecture in detail. This is the input. The first convolution layer is 8 by 8 feature map. 
Then it is second convolutional layer. Then there is a fully connected layer. And from the fully connected layer, uh, the output of the fully connected layer goes to the LSTM. They call it the policy LSTM. The poly from the policy LSTM, we have two kinds of input. First one is an n-dimensional vector. In our case, it is five-dimensional because we had five different types of actions. So this is the policy vector. And we have a scalar that is the value, that is the value of the value function. In policy LSTM, there, is, there are also two other kinds of input. First one is the goal description, and the second one is the previous action and reward, of the pre reward from the previous state. They have also two other kinds of architecture. They, uh, the first one is city navigation agent. The difference between a goal navigation agent and a, uh, and a city navigation agent is that the city navigation agent has an extra LSTM. They call it goal LSTM, and this is policy LSTM as before. But so now, the output from the convolutional layer also goes to goal LSTM, and the goal LSTM predict two types of two types of things. First one, it re the direction of the agent. As you see Google Map, you will find that there is a field of view which direction you are into. That is the output from this. Uh, from this layer, and then the, uh, the another output is a 64-dimensional vector that goes into the policy system, and the output of the policy system is same as like before. And they have another architecture that is called multi-city navigation agent. These two are almost similar, but in this case, they have each LSTM, each goal LSTM for each separate city, or in their case, each separate regions. That's it. So here is the detailed architecture of city navigation and multi-city navigation agent. Just for the multi-city navigation agent, there will be many more goal LSTM rather than one. So training. This is the most difficult part of this whole paper. Um, in deep learning, in deep reinforcement learning, uh, you, there are many training procedures. One of them is Q-learning. You can apply Q-learning in two steps. One is one step Q learning or n step Q learning. And there is another kind of algorithm that is called advantage actor critic. Advantage actor critic can be of two types, A2C and A3C. Difference between A2C and A3C is A3C is asynchronous. In this paper, they actually haven't applied any of those. They applied an advanced version of A3C. So I'm going to, for the simplicity, I'm going to explain a little bit about the A3C algorithm. That will help you understand what they have done. So actor critic. Uh, this is like a real life scenario. Imagine uh, two of your, uh, imagine you are playing FIFA with one of your friends. You take a shot, your friends judge what the hell did you do? Just like that. So you play the move, your friends judge you. So here, we, the, we call you the actor and we call your friend the critic. Here, they have used two types of network. One is for actor and one is for critic. The actor is the policy. Actor gives us the policy value and the critic network actually gives, if you take this action, what kind of value do you expect? So it actually judges on your action. So how does this, how does this uh, work? In actor critic, there are three types, uh, two networks. This is the actor networks. I call it, we call it, let's say, policy network. And this is the critic network. Let's say it, uh, it will output the value. So the actor and the critic network both get ST, current state, from the environment. We pass ST both actor and critic. And based on this current state, the policy network output an action. And it receives the next state. And based on this, we updated the parameter of the actor network. So after that, critics compute the value. And then we actually just, uh, it's a neural network, so we just trained it. 
uh, using the, uh, using this. Uh, after that, the uh, the actor will take another action eighty one eighty one based on its previous state, and then it will update its value, and then we will update the critic network based on this equation. Actually, it's not that. It's not that tough equation. Uh, in if you uh, if you see it in uh, implementation perspective, what you will do, you will just you will just take this first two part as your ground truth, and you will train this whole critic network. That's it. So th th this was the actor critic algorithm, but. The advantage actor critic is a slight, it's a little bit different. In advantage actor critic for each episode, okay, let me tell you first what an episode is. When you play Mario, let's say they have uh, many Marios, many Marios are playing together by themselves. If one Mario die, then for that Mario, an episode is over. So for each episode, we initialize three parameters. First, we initialize state. We initialize the parameter of the policy function. We initialize the parameter of the value function. Then for each time step, you can set a maximum time step uh, for each episode. We sample an action from the, from the current state. We also sample the, a reward and an state from the current state. Then we will calculate an advantage function. This advantage function is calculated by passing this next state into the critic param into the critic network and passing the current state into the critic network we calculate this advantage function then based on this advantage function like before we update the value of the critic parameter and also based on this advantage value we update the value of the policy parameter so what's the advantage of this it's because uh, let's go back to the previous slide if you apply this algorithm, they call that uh, it has a lot of variance. Here you can see, you will increase the reward of those states that has higher Q value. If two state has same Q value, if two state has, let's say, positive reward, but little, one is little bit higher, one is little bit lower, so the, you are continuously actually increasing the reward of the higher, increasing the value of the higher reward state. That's why it creates a lots of variance. And to, re to reduce the variance, they have introduced this ad advantage, this advantage value or advantage function. So this is a simple A3C algorithm. How does it work asynchronously? In implementation, this is actually each, uh, this, we actually put each of this network into many agents. Each agent work independently. If an episode is over for an agent, let's say there are n Mario is playing on the uh, on the Mario environment. If a Mario is if a Mario is dead or it has find is it has reached the final state, it will send its parameter to the coordinator. Then the coordinator, based on its gradient, will update the value of the global network. And that's it. It works asynchronously. The coordinator doesn't wait for the gradient of the other agent, or in, in our case, for the, uh, for the value from the other Mario. So the results. First, uh, let's, first result they have, con uh, the first experiment they have contacted is like, uh, here you are, you are seeing a graph. The, in y-axis, this is the average per episode reward. And in x-axis, this is the learning steps. Uh, each of these values will be multiplied by 10 to the power 9. So you can see they have trained three types of agent here. City navigation agent. City navigation agent, no skip. That means there is no connection from policy LSTM. Sorry, there is no connection from convolution network to the final policy LSTM. And there is a goal navigation agent. You can see that the city navigation agent is acting really good. It has higher rewards per episode. It gains higher rewards per episode. But on the contrary, 
the goal navigation result doesn't uh, doesn't actually act that much good. It's just a re result of the experiment. That's it. But the most one of the most important thing of this paper is reward shaping. What is reward shaping? Reward shaping is in their experiment what they did when an agent reaches a goal, they sample a new goal for the agent. So there is a long distance from the start position to end position for the agent. So if you use the sparse rewards, the environment won't be trained that much good. So they have introduced early rewards. What they have done, they have done when the agent is within 200 meter of the goal, it will be given some reward. And they have done it with curriculum learning. So we, I think all of us, has, all of us is, I mean, know the curriculum learning. The first, uh, it will, they have done this like that. First, they have sampled a goal within the 500 meter range of the agent. Then the agent, they, then they train the agent. After one episode is over, then they sample the goal a little bit further. Then after that episode, they sample the goal a little bit further. In this way, the agent run, agent trains incrementally and learn the whole environment. And here, this is the equation of the reward that they have used for training the agent. <coughs> environment learn. They haven't actually uh, uh, run a self driving car on the street. So how will we ensure that the agent has actually learned the environment? They have showed a statistical result actually. Here you are, what you are seeing in the x-axis, this is the initial start and initial distance between the start state and goal state. And in y-axis, this is these are the number of steps that the agent took to reach the goal state. So you can see for Washington, when the uh, distance is like 2,000 meter between initial and final state, the agent took almost 300 steps. But if the distance gets higher, the agent took much higher steps. You can think it like the basic physics equation, S equal to Vt, uh, just think that the agent moves um, moves continuously in a, in, a, in a continuous motion. So this follows a linear curve like the S from one VT. So from that, they hypothesized that the agent has actually learned the whole environment. It doesn't only have learned a portion of the environment. It doesn't work like that. They have also, they have also contacted multi-state experiments. And that is actually interesting. In multi-city experiment case, there, there were four types of training. First, they train the whole network for only one city. This, there is only one goal LSTM. Then they train the whole network for three cities jointly. Then they train the network for three cities, but, uh, but they force the weights of the of their target city force the weights of the targeted cities L LSTM, and they did it vice versa. So for this case, they have actually this place is hard to remember. They have actually conducted this experiment on the whole Manhattan. They selected five five regions on Manhattan: Wall Street, in New York University, Midtown, Central Park, and Harlem. Their target city was. In, this case, in their case was Wall Street. And what they found, uh, if you train jointly uh, this curve, if you train jointly, let's say you have trained five cities jointly, you have trained three cities jointly, then you ask the agent to reach the Wall Street, it will achieve a higher reward. But the, that, was not the, that was not the most important part of, of this experiment. The, exper the most important part was when they use transfer learning, like they froze the weights of their targeted cities LSTM, and they trained it on four cities except the Wall Street. 
they gained a reward of 400. But when they trained jointly, they gained a slightly better reward. But we can say from here that even we, even we don't train the agent with the target goal, it, and if we put them, and if we later, if we ask that agent to reach that target goal, it will reach. So it can reach an environment that it hasn't seen previously. This is the number of cities and goal rewards on Wall Street, sorry. So ablation analysis, they have also done some ablation analysis on the architecture. First, uh, they have, they use different architecture like LSTM, two LSTM, LSTM with skip connection. And in each case, they have shown that all of these cases that LSTM with skip connection actually works better. And they have done another ablation analysis on the uh, goal representation. Uh, they have actually, they doesn't uh, actually uh, apply their, uh, apply their, implement, apply their uh, theory on only landmark based goal, goal description. They have used also latitude and longitude based goal description and all other things. You can see that the latitude and longitude based goal description, that means you will give agent the latitude and longitude of the goal. You will give that to agent. It works better. But still, they prefer the landmark-based goal description because in this case, the agent doesn't have any kind of information about its, its position or about the goal position. That's why they choose to use landmark-based goal description. Finally, uh, this is a video from, what the hell happened? Video is not. No. There's a link, right? I have actually downloaded the video and put it. Yes, go to the link. It's okay. Just escape. Okay. We are playing now. So this is the video they have made. It's a three-minute video. You can watch it. So this is the start state of the agent, and it has to raise the goal. The agent doesn't get this map. It only gets the color image from the Google Street View. And it will reach. So this is the architecture they have described. It's not given the current position. They have used the convolutional neural network local specific current neural network. That is the goal LSTM and this is the policy LSTM. So after it reaches the goal, it has been given a new goal and then it also reaches there. They have conducted the experiments on Paris, in London and New York. Okay. They have conducted the experiment on three different cities. This is the experiment on London. After reaching each goal, the agent is given another goal and it is acting according to that. The most actually highlighted thing of this paper was that the agent doesn't have any idea where it is why does it want to go? It has just, it will just get the street view. That's something actually really interesting. This is the experiment on Central Park. Greenwich Village. So, as I have said before, if the agent is trained on multiple environments, then if it is given a new environment, it can, it can even reach the goal in that new environment. So these are the contributions of this paper. 
navigation from images and without a map learning architecture that balance generality and memorization. This, these are the three architectures that I have discussed earlier. That's it. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you.